The old paradigm is out. It used to be that the PSA was elevated and then we jumped straight to biopsy. But that's no longer the case. We should always do something before. And the value of the DRE, the digital rectal exam, has been discussed as a screening tool. It's not you know, very uh, sensitive or specific, but if the PSA is elevated, then definitely DRE should be part of the next uh, step uh, in, in the diagnostic workup. And so why do we want to have some sort of risk stratification? Well, first of all, we want to reduce the number of men who do need further clinical evaluation and really reduce the harms and exposing men to downstream harms. Uh, we also want to reduce the number of men needing an MRI because you know, we could put everybody in an MRI, but we don't have the resources or uh, the capacity to do that. We want to definitely reduce unnecessary biopsy. We know that we do a lot of those and they can cause harm, as you know. And we want to keep the detection of clinically significant disease, so grade group two to five. And we also definitely want to reduce overdiagnosis of grade group one, because once we put needles in prostates, we'll, we'll find cancer. And we can also have a safety net with rescreening. So just because we say that you don't need a biopsy right now, you can come back, you know, in say one to two years, depending on the PSA and the man's age and his general health. So we don't just, you know, say go fishing, you don't need a biopsy, but we still have a safety net. So this is kind of the rationale for risk stratification before biopsy. So how do we do that? Well, there are many ways to roams, and as I mentioned, the historic pathway is kind of out. And we have a lot of new different pathways and doctors all over the world do this differently. And I'm sure even in this room, we have a great variation. Uh, some propose an MRI only pathway, others propose a combination of risk stratification, whether it's a risk calculator or some other means combined with MRI and targeted biopsy and with or without biomarkers or polygenic risk scores. So there's multiple ways to do this and I can't give you, you know, the answer, but it's more up to what you think is right and what the patient prefers. And so I've served on the AUA guidelines. This is our guideline that came out uh, last year, and Dr. Miner was also on this guideline. We had uh, many calls <laughs> where we discussed these guidelines, and we ended up with an algorithm. So if you want to read more about it, uh, it's available freely online. And the first thing to do, as mentioned, is to do a DRE, and then also uh, repeat the PSA, because as you know, the PSA can vary. So always confirm uh, an elevation, because it might be that the value is normalized when you repeat it. And then we go on to risk stratification, and as I mentioned, there's many ways to do this, and we mentioned risk calculators and biomarkers and MRI as part of this, and, and having a shared discussion and shared decision making with the man. And in the initial biopsy setting, we recommend an MRI as optional, but in the repeat biopsy setting, it's uh, recommended uh, if it hasn't been done before. What about risk calculators? Well, there are many out there, and here in the US, I think the most commonly used is the Prostate Biopsy Collaborative Group Risk Calculator that gives you and the patient a risk of having high-grade disease on biopsy. And in Europe, it's the European risk calculator is commonly used, and there are many more out there. And in our guideline, we, we reviewed all of them. And they can, you know, they're cheap, they're uh, actually no cost at all, they're available for free online, and you can, you know, simply plug in the numbers. Genetics, as you know, there's also different uh, tests available for polygenic risk scores, for example. And obviously, you know, um, uh, genetics such as BRCA1 or 2 or HOXP13, those types of genes uh, definitely increase risk. And if somebody has a strong family history or is of African uh, American descent, then that in increases the risk and might um, elevate the need for biopsy. And so here uh, is what it looks like, an explosion on the market of biomarkers. I always have to update this slide for every talk because this field is evolving so fast. So now we have blood, urine, and tissue-based biomarkers that can improve the specificity uh, before biopsy and after an elevated PSA. And we don't have time to review all of them in this talk, but um, you can read also about these in our AUA guideline. And MRI, why do we do that? Well, we do it uh, to increase the sensitivity and the specificity. And in our guideline, we recommended um, optional systematic biopsy in the initial biopsy setting, um, but required um, if the MRI was negative to kind of have a, um, 
complete assessment of the prostate. But otherwise, the whole field of urology, both here in the US and in Europe, is moving towards more targeted biopsy because we don't want to expose men to multiple needles anymore now that we can do them much better. So an MRI before biopsy really helps you make a better biopsy. And if you look at the evidence out there, you know, this field is also growing really rapidly. And here's a really nice systematic review of PSA screening versus PSA plus MRI-based pathways. And, you know, multiple, multiple studies that have been completed, and I've been an investigator of the Swedish trials in Göteborg and in Europe, in the RSPC. And taken together, they all come to the same conclusion. So, you know, doing an MRI before biopsy and integrating MRI as part of these pathways really keeps the detection of significant disease, it reduces the risk of overdiagnosis and reduces unnecessary biopsies. So it's really, really uh, been a game changer, as you know. And here's um, what our screening trial in Göteborg looked like, where we combined PSA and MRI and really showing the, that we can halve the risk of overdiagnosis because that has been the main challenge with PSA screening. And the same in the, by the group from Stockholm in Sweden. They have what's called a Stockholm 3 test, which is a multiplex test that combines clinical data, proteins, and genetics into one complete test. And doing that before uh, MRI also reduces biopsies and overdiagnosis while keeping the detection of the significant disease. So it's kind of the trifecta of early detection, if you will. Another approach is to combine uh, the 4K score, which is based on the four calocrines, with MRI and doing targeted biopsy. And the same thing here, you see a less re demand for MRI and also a reduction in biopsy. So it's, it really reduces the number of men who go through this pathway and keeps the benefits but reduces the harms. But it's important to remember that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So really, we need high-quality MRI studies and standardized protocols and optimal readings of those scans by experienced radiologists and um, also high-quality biopsies. Because we still have a lot of indeterminate MRIs, we, which really depends on reader experience. And we are doing a lot of MRIs and a lot of biopsies still. So we, we need to refine these pathways. And we talked yesterday about AI and machine learning, and you know, one such method is to use that on MRI interpretation. So here's an example from uh, Professor Hoosman's group in the Netherlands showing that an AI-based system that's been you know, trained on a lot of MRIs was superior to, um, to just a, a pool of radiologists on average in, in um, discriminating based on grade group two or higher. So I think you know, the AI is really um, promising um, as path of these pathways. Thank you.